Hi there, my name's Nancy. I'm 21 years old, and three years ago, I married the love of my life. Everything seemed to be going great. Even though my husband is Spanish, we didn't have many problems except for the language barrier. To show my love, I decided to learn Spanish so I could talk better with him and his family. That's how much I loved him. I was doing this in secret. Johnson, my husband, and Mary, my mother-in-law, didn't know I was learning Spanish. Not only was I learning, but I got pretty good at it. I knew that if I was in Spain, I could manage. You might be wondering, if I'm so good at Spanish, why doesn't my husband know? Well, I was a bit shy. It can be scary trying to speak a new language, especially with people you're close to. But I decided it was time to stop hiding. I needed to speak Spanish with both my husband and my mother-in-law. After all, I learned it to make communication easier, right? Well, it's a good thing I didn't start speaking Spanish right away because I found out some surprising information one day that led to a series of unfortunate events. Hello, Mama. How are you, my son? Thank you for inviting me over this lovely Sunday afternoon. It was our pleasure, Mom. Hello, Mama. Hello, my daughter. How are you? Thank you so much for including me. Oh, hush. You know you're always wanted and welcome here. I brought some croissants and how do you Americans say, um, bagels? Yes, bagels and croissants for our afternoon tea. Oh, how lovely. Thank you so much. Come, come and sit, Mama. The food will be ready soon. Did she prepare the food? No, I did most of the prep. Don't worry. Oh, thank God. Hearing this, I wondered what she meant by that. But I was too shy to ask. How strange. Mary always seemed to like my cooking. Why was she saying those things? At the time, I thought maybe she just wanted to eat food made by her son that day. Maybe she wanted to taste food that reminded her of old times. Then I heard her say, I hate her cooking. Why did you invite me here instead of taking me to a cafe so we could avoid her? Mom, we agreed to speak in English so Nancy doesn't feel left out, remember? Oh, forgive me, my sweet daughter. I was just saying that the food looks so good. I was surprised to learn that my son made it. Oh, I wish it was you who made it. I love your cooking. At this point, I was confused. How could she say such awful things in Spanish and then lie to my face in English? I thought I might have misunderstood, but I had a plan to confirm what I heard. Oh, please don't worry. You should never feel ashamed to speak your native tongue. Go right ahead. I'll be fine. I wanted to catch what she was saying, so I planned to use the Google Translate app to record her and make sure I understood correctly. We all sat at the table, getting ready to eat, and what came next shocked me to the core. I want us to discuss our plan. The time is approaching. It's literally tomorrow. Johnson, you have to be serious. The app, along with my Spanish knowledge, confirmed there was some plan going on, but I didn't know what it was. Mama, not now. I said I would handle it. What are you going to tell her? Nancy, darling, please pass me the sugar. She doesn't know anything about the plan. I was just going to tell her that I would be out of town. Out of town? What for? What was going on? I was so confused. I was constantly looking down at my phone to see what the app was translating. I think they assumed I wasn't paying attention and became less careful with their words, which was good for me as I was learning their true feelings. She's not too smart. Look at her glued to her phone. We can talk about this now. Okay, mama. Fine. What do you want to discuss? The plane is leaving at 2 p.m. Are you sure you'll be able to escape her then? Escape me? What for? I was so confused, but I stayed calm and pretended not to understand so I could plan my next move. Yes, Mama, I know. I will do what needs to be done. I know how important this is. It is extremely important. If your great uncle doesn't see us tomorrow, he will give the house to someone else, like your cousin or your aunt. We can't let that happen. No one needs to know about this house. Oh, Mama, you're so funny. Don't worry. I just said that in English so she doesn't suspect what we're talking about. Who, Nancy? Yes, 
Oh, sorry, my love. I was just asking who made this delicious tea. It's splendid. Oh, that would be your talented son. I'm afraid I'm not as good as he is when it comes to these things. Oh, darling, your food is amazing, amazingly terrible. Mom, she will catch you. She can't catch me. She's too stupid to understand us. I don't know, Mom. She obviously understands some basics, I think. Let's see. Nancy, how much Spanish do you know? At this moment, I knew I had to lie. I said I didn't know much, so they would keep exposing themselves, and I could keep learning their true colors. How I managed to stay calm while being insulted still amazes me. I guess I knew it was more important to handle this situation than to get emotional right then. I said, oh, I'm still very bad at Spanish. I only know the typical things like buen dia and como te llamas, but that's it. Oh, that simply won't do, darling. You should learn some more Spanish. Yes, ma'am, I will. Well, it's a good thing for Johnson and me, as we can gossip about you. I'm just, how do you say, kidding with you, me, Carino. We would never do that to you. Are we doing it right now? Yes, which makes this extra funny. They laughed, and I kept using Google Translate. I also checked other apps, websites, and forums to see if what they were saying was correct. I got about 99% confirmation from these sources. Now that I knew they clearly didn't like me and were making fun of me, I had to gather as much information as possible, even though their insults were hurting me. The next thing I heard shattered my resolve. As I was saying, this house is extremely important. No one can know about this house, okay? We need to be the only ones knowing because we could make a lot of money. We can't lose this opportunity. I'm so glad we're doing this. It's a good thing we didn't tell my wife because I don't want to share the spoils. Me neither. Everything needs to go smoothly. Your great uncle Jack said that whoever contacts him first about this issue will inherit the mansion. So we need to go there physically before anyone else and start working on remodeling and improving the house. I can't wait to have a house in New Hampshire. This is where I'll go to escape my wife and my life here in Mississippi. Sometimes I can't stand her. You know you're still young, way too young to be married to someone like her. Come and live with me in New Hampshire. You can enjoy your youth with women and booze, have a good time, and then settle down when you're ready. Let's leave this place. Honestly, Mama, I think you're right. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I felt tears welling up. Excuse me, what's wrong? Is everything okay? Yes, I just need to get something from the kitchen. I couldn't listen to them anymore. I needed to collect myself and not make a scene. How could they say those awful things with me right there in the room? Did they have no shame? I was so upset. I began pacing up and down the kitchen, and then I saw my mother-in-law's purse sitting on the counter. I decided to look inside and take her phone. Luckily, it was unlocked. I opened her WhatsApp and sent Uncle Jack's number to my phone. I quickly deleted the text from her phone, so it looked like nothing happened. It felt like I was acting on instinct. I didn't know why I did it, but I was glad because I was now planning to get back at them. I returned to the dining room where the conversation was still going on. They seemed to be talking about the same thing. So tomorrow we leave for the vacation. I think it's well-deserved because of all the hard work we've been doing. I second that. We deserve this break. Is everything okay? Yes, honey, we were just talking about the weather and how it's a perfect day to go relax somewhere. Would you like us to do that? Maybe not today, scene. Oh, okay. When would you like to go then? Maybe tomorrow? Both Mary and Johnson froze slightly. I was looking for their reaction and noticed it. I don't think tomorrow would be possible. I asked Scene to help me with some things around the house. Oh, what things? Why is she asking so many questions? Um, just to move things around. I can help too, if you like. That won't be necessary. See how nosy she is being. I don't like it one bit. Do you see why you have to leave this place? Don't worry, Mama. I've got this handled. I still managed to keep a smile despite knowing what they were saying. 
I was looking forward to my plan for revenge. I continued recording their conversations until the very end to make sure I had all the details. As I mentioned before, my Spanish was getting pretty good, but I still wanted to make sure I got the right information. That night, I snuck away from the bedroom and went to the office to do some more investigating. I replay the audio, and sure enough, my doubts about my accuracy were gone. From this whole ordeal, I learned that there was a vacation planned for tomorrow to go and claim a house from Great Uncle Jack, and that these people apparently hated me and were planning to leave me. A bonus piece of information I got was when I went to the kitchen to pace. I had left my phone, which was still recording, in the room with my husband and mother-in-law, and I managed to pick up some more useful information. The conversation consisted of Mary asking Johnson about his computer password because she wanted to change some aspects of their flight. I managed to get the password and flight details. I must have hit the jackpot. I logged into John's computer, and sure enough, there were flight details on the website where he booked the tickets. Feeling very sneaky and devious, I may or may not have changed their flight details, pushing their flight to the day after tomorrow. This was just phase one of my plans. There was a lot more to come. Since I had sent myself Great Uncle Jack's number, I was ready to do what I needed to do. Hello, Uncle Jack, it's Nancy. Oh, hello, darling. How are you doing? Is everything okay? Well, no, not really. I went into great detail explaining what had happened that day. I even sent him the audio recording as proof because, without it, I doubt he would have believed me. We cut the call so he could listen to the voice recordings, and we talked again after he finished listening. Wow, I don't even know what to say. How could Mary and Johnson do this? They were such sweet and innocent people when they were younger. How could they do this to you, to me? I know, it's a lot to take in, it was shocking to me too. You have indeed improved your Spanish. Well done. Thanks, Jack. But now that we know this, what do we do? Well, obviously they're not going to get the house. That's a fact. After hearing all of this, there is no way that I would never give such a valuable and honorable gift to people who plan to ruin it with their evilness and foolishness. Okay, I get it. It's your house, and you have every right to do what you want with it. Yes, I do. From now on, I will ignore their calls. Let's see how they feel about that. Thanks again for bringing this to my attention. You are a good and kind-hearted person, Nancy. Please don't let the ugliness of this world change you. Thank you for your time and willingness to listen. Hearing what you heard today couldn't have been easy. I applaud you for your strength. Please take care, Uncle Jack. You too, love. Good night. With that, I knew I had secured the downfall of both Mary and Johnson. Now that everything was set, I just had to wait for the right moment to make my move. When I got back to the bedroom, Johnson was still fast asleep. It hurt to know that my husband, whom I love dearly, would treat me this way. I didn't know he felt all those things, and maybe if we had talked, we could have found a solution. But he chose to be deceitful. I took his phone and turned off his alarm. Without it, he would surely oversleep, and that's exactly what happened. I packed my things and went to a hotel for the night. I couldn't stay in the house with someone like that. The next day, absolute chaos ensued. I'm sure John woke up to a hundred missed calls from his mother and was frantically packing because he hadn't packed the day before. I suspect this because I got a call from him at 1 p.m. Where the hell are you? Why didn't my alarm go off? And why aren't you here? Oh, I decided to take a little vacation day for myself. Oh, that's nice. A little heads up would have been appreciated, though. Yeah, likewise, seen. What? What do you mean? Anyways, that doesn't matter. I'm running late for my flight. I mean my meeting with mom. Why are you in such a hurry? I'm sure she wouldn't mind you being a little bit late. You don't understand. Anyway, it's fine. I won't be home tonight and tomorrow night. I've got a lot I need to do. See you later. Before I could even respond, he hung up. I'm pretty sure he was so overwhelmed 
that he didn't even check the proper details of his ticket, which I had changed to the next day. Through the Find My iPhone app, I saw that he made his way to the airport. Imagine waking up, rushing out of the house with only minutes to spare to make it to your flight, just to find out that it had been canceled. I'm sure he was moving like a madman up and down that airport. I could almost see him frantically checking his phone, realizing the flight details were wrong. Suddenly, I received a call from Mary. What have you done? What do you mean, Mary? Drop the act, I know you tampered with our flight. If by tampered you mean change the date, then yes, that's exactly what I did. Why would you do that? I was trying to help you guys out. Didn't you say you wanted John's help with moving some stuff around? I noticed that you had the flight booked for today, the same day John was supposed to help you, so I decided to change some things. You're welcome. Johnson, come and talk to your wife before I reach through the phone and strangle her. Johnson grabbed the phone. Listen here, Nancy. I don't know what you've done, but whatever it is, stop it right now. Uncle Jack still isn't answering his phone. Try again, Mary said, her voice shaking with frustration. He isn't answering his phone because he doesn't want to speak with you too, I replied calmly. You, you can understand us, Johnson asked, sounding shocked. Every last word. But, but how? I've been practicing, I said, feeling a strange mix of satisfaction and sadness. I've been learning Spanish so I could communicate better with you and your mom. But now I see it also helped me uncover your plans. Johnson's face went pale. You, you knew all along. Yes, I heard everything. Your plans to leave me, to claim the house without me knowing. I heard it all. Johnson and Mary were silent. I could hear their heavy breathing over the phone, the shock and fear evident in their silence. So what now? Johnson finally asked. Now, you deal with the consequences of your actions, I said. I already spoke to Uncle Jack. He knows everything. You won't be getting that house. But Nancy, you don't understand, Johnson pleaded. We had no choice. We needed that house. You had a choice, I said firmly. You could have been honest with me. Instead, you chose to deceive me. Now you have to live with the consequences. There was another long silence. Then Mary spoke, her voice trembling. Nancy, we're sorry. We didn't mean for it to go this far. It's too late for apologies, I replied. You made your bed, now you have to lie in it. I hung up the phone and took a deep breath. It was done. I had exposed their plans and ensured they wouldn't get the house. I felt a sense of relief, but also a deep sadness. The man I loved, the family I thought I was a part of, had betrayed me. But I knew I had to move on. I packed my things and checked out of the hotel. I decided to stay with a friend for a while until I figured out my next steps. As I walked out of the hotel, I felt a mix of emotions, anger, sadness, relief, but most of all, a sense of empowerment. I had stood up for myself and taken control of the situation. And now, I was ready to start a new chapter in my life, free from deceit and betrayal. I told you, Mama, I told you she might hear us. So that means yesterday you heard everything? Yep, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to divorce your good-for-nothing son and leave you two to deal with each other. How blessed day. Oh, and next time you want to talk about someone with them right there in the room, make sure they don't understand what you're saying. Have a nice life. I hung up before they could respond. I was done with their nonsense. Later that day, I got a call from Uncle Jack. Hello, dear. How are you? I'm a bit upset. I just had an ugly fight with John and Mary, and now I'm getting a divorce from him. I'm so sorry that things turned out this way, Nancy. It's part of life, I guess. How are things on your end? Well, I finally spoke to them and gave them a piece of my mind. They are not happy. What did you say to them? I told John that he's an idiot for treating you the way he did, and told Mary that she's evil for roping her son into her schemes. I also told them that I have given you the house. You what? Yes, dear, the mansion is yours. Even if you get a divorce from John, 
it's all yours, and you can share it with whomever you please. I, I don't know what to say, Jack, it's too much. I wanted this house to go to someone kind and compassionate, but also tough and strong when needed. That's exactly who you are. A house is the least I could do after all the stress and turmoil those two put you through. The house is yours. Take it. After that call, I felt a strange mix of emotions. I had managed to distance myself from two toxic people, and on top of that, I had been gifted a multi-million dollar mansion. It felt surreal, like something out of a movie. But it was real, and it was happening to me. The next few days were a whirlwind. I moved my belongings into the mansion and started to make it my own. Every room, every corner, became a testament to my resilience and strength. I decorated the house with a sense of newfound freedom and pride. I was no longer bound by the deceit and betrayal of Johnson and Mary. This house, this beautiful mansion, was a symbol of my victory over their treachery. As expected, Mary and Johnson were furious. They sent me constant threats, trying to intimidate me into giving up the house. But I stood my ground. Each time they sent a threat, I responded with a picture of a different part of the house, reminding them that it was mine, not theirs. I wanted them to see what they had lost, to feel the sting of their own actions. Revenge never felt so sweet. One evening, as I was sitting in the grand living room, Surrounded by the opulence of the mansion, I reflected on everything that had happened. I thought about how much I had loved Johnson, how I tried to learn Spanish to communicate better with him and his family. I remembered the hurtful things they had said about me, their plans to leave me out of their lives. It had been a painful journey, but I had come out stronger on the other side. I received another call from Uncle Jack. Nancy, I just wanted to check in and see how you're doing. I'm doing well, Jack. Thank you for everything. The house is beautiful. I'm glad you like it. You deserve it after everything you've been through. I appreciate that. It means a lot to me. You know, Nancy, I've been thinking. Maybe you should consider staying in Spain for a while. You could use a change of scenery, and it might help you heal. That's a good idea, Jack. I think I will. Thank you for the suggestion. As I hung up the phone, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. The future was uncertain, but I knew I had the strength to face whatever came my way. I had overcome betrayal and heartbreak, and I had emerged victorious. This mansion was not just a house, it was a symbol of my resilience, my strength, and my ability to overcome any obstacle. In the end, I realized that the best revenge was living well. I had a beautiful home, a supportive family in Uncle Jack, and a bright future ahead of me. Mary and Johnson could stew in their own bitterness and regret, but I was moving forward with my life, and that, I knew, was the greatest revenge of all.